24 elders in short what I'm trying to say is that I want us I want our worship to conform with the worship in heaven praise the Lord I don't want us to worship our God according to our standards the world standards but the standards in heaven praise be to God and in your own words I just want you to commune and fellowship with God, your maker, for you know the purpose as to why he created you. He is great and mighty, majestic in power. Oh, thank you, mighty Jesus. Thank you, King of Kings. Thank you because you honored me and created me. Oh, mighty God. How marvelous is your name. Oh, gracious one, merciful. The only one to be worshipped. The only one to be exalted. Oh, mighty God. Oh, Hakuna Chamboli Narokushinda. Hakuna Jambo Linaro Kushinda Oh mighty Jesus Everything that we struggle with Oh Is under your power Oh Thank you Holy One Holy One The hallowed one, generation in generation, keep on praising you. Yet no name sums you up. Yes, mighty God, you are the hallowed one, and you remain to be the same. You remain to be the same. You never change. Oh God, 
Oh God, you are everything to us, mighty God. Yes, majestic in power. You are great and marvelous. Oh my Jehovah God. Oh God. Wewe ni Mungu usiyeshindwa. Wewe ni Mungu unayeweza. Wewe ni Mungu unayestahili sifa kutoka vilindini vya moyo yetu.
that you feel that the Lord cannot do. I don't know that burden that you feel is so heavy for you that the Lord cannot lift it up from you. I don't know what is so hard for you that you feel you cannot do it. The assurance of today that God is able to do it, church. Now God is assuring that He is able to do it. He is able to do it. It doesn't matter the magnitude of the burden you have. Our God is able to do it. Yes, He is able to do it. That big burden you feel is so hard for you. Yes, that big burden, that big disease that you feel God cannot heal. I mean, He is able to do it. He is able to do it. He is able to do a church. Why don't you declare it one more time? That God is able to do it. Yes, He is able to do it. 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 Hallelujah. He is able to do it. He is able to do it. He is able. Hallelujah. It doesn't matter that. Doesn't matter how big it is, our God is able to do it. Yes, declare it before God. Just declare it, just declare it. He is able to do it. He is able to fight for you. Yes, Jesus. Yes, you are able to do it, God. Oh God, that as sons and daughters of the kingdom, we are assured of these, oh God, and we receive it, Lord, with thanksgiving. Lord, we receive these assurances, oh God. Lord, we believe in you, Lord, with thanksgiving and praises in our heart this morning. As a church, Lord, we thank you. 
We thank you because you have carried us through, oh God, and you shall continue doing it to us, oh God. And for this reason, Lord, we just thank you, we just praise you. And church, why don't we just join hands our hearts together as we just praise our God, as we just give a shout unto our God. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! I think church, we can do it better. We can do it better. Amen? Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Are you excited in the house of the Lord today? I'm so excited. Amen. The Lord is so faithful. Why don't you just turn into your neighbor and just say hi? No, don't don't high five them. Just say hi to them. Hallelujah. Yeah, turn to your neighbor. Just turn to your neighbor. Tell them hi. I didn't say we we tap them. I said hi. Yeah? Amen. 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 Yes, yes, yes. And as we do so, I just request as we take our seats. We can just take our seats. Amen. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you music team that was so wonderful we started there we are almost giving out our offerings and tithes but before then are you there it's your first time to visit with us today is it your first time to just be with us in grace chapel international chuka i just request you to stand by on your feet we just see you recognize you appreciate you and uh, just welcome you in a gci way are you there wow 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 sister there yeah there's another one there there's another one hallelujah wow 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 there's another one there amen there's another one there we're standing alone amen amen wow thank you we love visitors so much amen, amen. we love visitors so much for this reason we just request you after the service we shall just have a small session with you we just share a cup of hot tea and bread amen so don't be in a rush to to leave after service we shall just uh, show you our hospitality as we share a cup of tea to know you more you know us more and then the lord will be praised amen, amen. Uh, it's our time to give time to give our offerings our tithes our thanksgiving it's time to give so you can prepare your your offering you can prepare your givings as uh, ushers facilitators i can see sister lucy and the brother sukunta there yeah, uh, and as we do so, I will just request the music team to continue ministering to us uh, with a song, and the Lord is going to be praised. Amen. So, as we give, let's also be blessed by the music team as they do as a song, and the Lord will be praised. Amen. It's time to give. Welcome, music team. Thank you. 
My name is James Bogwa. I'm born again for the guest when you are the when you know I'm a Yes, my name is James Bogwa. I'm Penda Yesu. I'm going to bring to you the announcements today. Uh, yes. We are waiting for them to, to be projected. Yes. So the first uh, announcement we wish to thank all who attended uh, the Wednesday service and the Bible study on Thursday. Thank you so much for all of you who attended. We the Wednesday to Rikua Wengi Kuriko and SDU in Guinea. Let us continue like that to Endele Kukuja Bona Balik Sana. The Wednesday service starts at uh, 6 p.m. to 7.30, and the Bible study uh, starts for, from 6 to 7.30. So the Wednesday service is on Wednesday, and the, service, uh, the Bible study is on Thursday. Please let us continue coming uh, so that we can study the Word of God together. Thank you to all swaps, the young adults who attended the bonfire on Friday. May the Lord bless you. How was it? How was it? Mulikura nyama kashiba. Mimi nilishindwa kukura ugali ni kura nyama. Bwana siwe. Yes, nyama ilikuwa mingi tukaenda hadi round 2. So wenye hawakuwa hawakuja this time, please make sure if there is another bonfire, please make sure that you attend. Bwana wabariki sana. Our baptism will be happening today immediately after the service at the baptism for La Sa. Uh, yes. <laughs> it will be happening uh, after the service. Please, please. I know we have met in the morning. I don't know if there is anyone who didn't come in the, at uh, 8.30. If you didn't come, please see Pastor. If you, did, you, did, you are not able to come at 8.30, see the Pastor so that you can be updated on how we will do that. Yes. We shall be having a pillars breakfast on 26th March. All pillars are welcomed. One, two, three. One, two, three. At least I only gonna base. So yes, let us make sure we come. Last time it was wonderful. We did uh, aerobics here and uh be what to be sweat. People need to do some uh, some exercise. Please make sure that you attend the uh, on 26th March. Namungu at Bariki. We shall be having uh, a Good Friday service on 15th of April. Uh, please, please let us attend. That is on 15th April. Namungu at Bariki. Our Hymn Friday has been moved from 25th March to 1st of April. Kaidi purpose to attend. So we'll be having a Hymn Friday. It on 1st uh, of April. It was supposed to be on 25th, but it has been pushed to 1st of April. We shall be having a prayer surge uh, on 8th and 9th of April. Let us purpose to attend. I remember last time nearly explained Kasaj. Uh, I think I'm one of them. I need Kusturiwa Kidogo. Uh, so let us let us purpose to let us even prepare ourselves to uh, to 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 pray and uh, I know God hears our prayers. We shall be having a worship experience on 22nd of April. Uh, continue preparing your hearts. We'll come here and worship the Lord. Thank you so much for listening to the announcements. Mungu wabariki sana sana. I welcome the pastor to, who is bringing the word and also prayed for the Sunday school. Bwana wabariki sana. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Wow, I'm nervous. <laughs> I don't know why. Um, so the children can come and we pray for you to go to class. 
children. Um, where? Okay. Children, children, children. Yes, yes. If you are seated beside a child who goes to Sunday school, uh, who attends our class, please come. Thank you, thank you. Who is remaining? Okay. Church. Let's just look. Thank you. Good, good, good. Shall you stretch your hands towards these beloved ones and then we release them to class? We appreciate you, God, this morning for the gift of children in our church. We are glad that you gave them to us for discipleship and for teaching them all your ways that they will obey so that God, they will be the people you want them to be, resting in your will and becoming the great man who will rest in your purpose. And so we commit them to you. As they go to class today, you will keep them well. And even their teachers, we pray for the grace of God upon them. You will help them to minister to these young ones for your glory. And for this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Hallelujah, church. Praise the Lord. Well, um, so I will. Uh, I, I sing a song. I sing a song as part of my sermon, just to begin, and, and we are singing together. So um, it's a prayer, but um, it's, it's interesting as I was thinking through it. Um, I thought it would be part of uh, what I'll be sharing today, so we can sing. And then uh, if you find me singing somewhere in the sermon, please sing with me. I'm not saying I will, um, but it's this song. I want us to sing together. When the oceans rise and thunders roar, I will soar with you above. Help me sing. to you this morning again to the hearing of your word we open our hearts that you will speak to us that king of grace we will change and as we look forward to grow and be established this year we pray that this will be life changing to us in Jesus name we pray amen praise the Lord when the oceans rise and thunders roar. now you see none of us lives in the sea and none of us lives in the ocean we live um, well I hear that some people I hear their stories and there are some movies which have things called mermaids. And, and when I was being told that story, uh, I was meant to believe that they are men and actually they are, called, they are women or ladies. They have a tail like a fish. So ni mutu. And then down, it's a fish. So they are called mermaids. Have you heard of those stories? I know you've even watched those movies and series and episodes and um, all those editions, one, two, three, four of mermaids. So um, <laughs> I'm not sure, I'm not sure, I'm not sure about that, but um, you see, we were meant to survive here, here on land here, praise the Lord, and fish was meant to survive in the sea, and, and it's interesting when you get fish out of water, it dies off, and I'll take you to the water, um, those who are being baptized, praise the Lord, yeah, when I get you to water, 
just like that. If you don't know how to swim and you do not know how to manage breath, I'm sure you will suck in water and we will get a different story. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now when the oceans rise and thunders roar, this is kind of figurative. We are not talking of um, um, that, uh, I mean, the sea now, the oceans have raged up, the storms have come. You remember geography, the swash and the backwash. Hallelujah. When <laughs> Praise the Lord. Geography says, in the actions of waters, in the act in the form three, hey, 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 mungo has idea. When, when waters come to the shore, it's called swash. When it goes back, it's called backwash. So it washes some sands and goes back and deposits some other sand on the sea. Then we have what we call the beach, beaches. So beach is one of the features that is formed as a result of that action of water coming, swashing and backwashing. Praise the Lord. Now, when the oceans rise and thunders roar, it's figurative. To mean, um, uh, at times uh, as we live, things happen to us. Um, you see, the Lord can just cause the oceans to rise up. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me try and explain this before I proceed and read these things. Uh, this someone, and then the Lord will help us. You see, when... when, when Oceans rise up. Who calls God and tells him, God, you know what? Today we are so, 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 we have really missed the oceans rising up. And so we we'll want you to cause some waves underground and waters to rise so that we just enjoy them. Praise the Lord. Who does that? No one. God causes them. Hallelujah. Are you following me? And so at times oceans will just rise up. And thunder will just roar when it's raining, especially the conventional rainfall that is accompanied by thunder and lightning. It just happens. Praise the Lord. Um, and the storms come. So what do we do in those moments? Do we rush in the ocean? Do you dive in the backwash so that you go with it? And you become a victim? And then geography can discover another feature that can be formed because of slash and backwash. Do we, do we, what happens when wash, oceans rise up and thunders roll in our lives? I'm referring to the kind of things that happen to us and we are out of control. But when they have happened, there's a way they leave us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, as we think about growth and establishment this year, I was thinking of the things that hold us back. Pastor was telling us last week, let it go. We should let things go. Now, whatever I'm sharing is not only written in the Bible, but I want to believe it is true. See, statistics have it that about 0.7 million suicides in the world are as a result of oceans and storms. Something just happens that is beyond our control. Then people, in where I place, I come from, it's called, um, I'm not speaking my mother tongue, I'm speaking uh, Alice's mother tongue. It's called Mikoye. Praise the Lord. So what happens is that um, at times somebody will say, hey, I'm going, I'm going. And people will say, take the rope, go. You think you are living for us? Praise the Lord. You think you mean so much to us? Let me tell you, even if you don't mean anything to people, you mean so much to God. So much. So, so much. And see, 0.7 million suicides in the world. People are dying and killing themselves. During the COVID period in 2020, we recorded about 220 cases of suicides per month. Yani, August, 1, 2, 3, 4, 100, 219, 220 cases per month. People were being... Uh -huh. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Yes. And so, it, it bothers us. Because by the time somebody reaches that point and re of deciding to <clears throat> do whatever they do, they have really thought there is no way out. Life has to end because it, has not, it cannot proceed. Praise the Lord. 
So one of the things that hit me so much is people are sick and they do not want to appreciate that God still loves them and also they don't want to appreciate that God can intervene and so they look for survival tactics. And then when the survival tactics hit the, the wall, they don't work out, they decide to... Yes, praise the Lord. Now, a story in the book, if you read literature, a story in the book of things that fall apart, describe a character, a character named Eneke. Eneke is a bird. So Eneke the bird, now I'm in, I'm in class of literature, Eneke the bird um, was asked, why are you always flying on your wings? Why have you never, we have never seen you patch down? You are always on your wings. And do you know what the bird said? He said, since men have learned to shoot without missing their target, I have learned to fly without patching on a twig. Praise the Lord. You get that? So this bird was asked, Eneke, why do you love? You're always on your wings. Why is it that we've never seen you even down as other birds we see them doing like this, the tail? We've never seen you somewhere resting on a twig. And then he said, do you know what? I have learned to fly without patching on any twig. Why? Because many people why? Because, because men have learned to shoot their target without missing. So if I punch somewhere, I will be hit. You see, many people today are dying and doing whatever they are doing and adapting to life as it is. The term, it is life. And so they have learned to fly without resting on twigs. They have never learned to rest and ask themselves, wait, McNeil, wait fast. What's happening with you? Are we together? Praise the Lord. Are you lost? I want you to get that before I proceed to strongholds. Praise the Lord. I want you to lay that, lay that foundation. And you see, people are up and down in life, yet they have so much. At times I said, if the Lord was candid enough and was so gracious enough, he will just come and take the life of Chalingo or Catherine, or pastor. I can't tell you what I'm a display here to see you. You will wonder if it's bishop at times. Praise the Lord. Because we carry so much. And today, I don't want to call it depression, but I want to call it an emotional stronghold. And I will explain. Hallelujah. I'm not preaching heresy. Emotional stronghold. So if you're all that, those are strongholds. They are holding you. You can't move. You have learned to fly. You are always on your wings. You never know how to rest on a twig. Emotional stronghold. And so I thought, in the time the church has given me to preach, I will do a, a series on strongholds. If I don't finish, the other time I will stand here, I will proceed. So only kifika part two, mengine akuje ni kenele antena la part three mpaka ntamali, ntamali. So strongholds, part one. Today we are talking about destroying emotional patterns. How we would invoke God's power to intervene in your emotional part of your mind that you will be able to allow your mind to capture the truth of God and even though the oceans have risen up, the thunders have roared, you still would hold in a still way besides the still waters to invoke God's power to break emotional patterns that we'll be having. And so, as I finish my introduction, I love to read two scriptures, Isaiah 61, 1, which is also alluded by Jesus in Luke 4, 18. Now, these words here were spoken by prophet Isaiah. It's a messianic prophet. It's called a messianic prophecy. A prophecy that was told way back in the Old Testament by men of God who had not even seen the Messiah. But they could look so much in eternity and look so far much ahead and they would see Jesus coming. Praise the Lord. So Isaiah says, the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me because the Lord has anointed me to proclaim good news to the, to the poor. He has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. Wait, who are the broken hearted? 
Does it only mean you must be in a relationship to break? Then you say, oh my God, I'm not broken. Does it mean that's the only thing that breaks people's hearts? No. It, 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 it could describe a kind of state that the heart is rendered. So it's broken hearted. So from the word broke. So ilifanyika. Are we together? And then heart. So whatever is being broken is there. Heart. Haivunjiki physically so to own pieces. But it, when we look at you, we will tell you, man, bro. <laughs> Praise the Lord. So the spirit of the sovereign Lord is on me. Now, he has sent me to bind up the broken hearted. So God cares about your emotions. He cares. And it's the spirit of the Lord that has been released to bind the broken hearted. Or rather to sort the emotional part in our soul. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now this scripture was repeated by Jesus in Luke 4, 18. Actually, the book of Isaiah was quoted so much by Jesus. Hallelujah. And he said this. Same words. That he came to bind the broken hearted. And to proclaim freedom for the captives. And release from darkness for the prisoners. Praise the name of the Lord. Psalm 147.3. And then I would... I would move. He heals. I see Mujian Kara. You know, the quad broken with so many little born and Nikki. So many. Let's go together. He heals. Thank you. He heals the broken hearted and binds up their wounds. Him alone. So today we want to talk how we can invoke God and how God sees emotions. And I will be using just one scripture um, to explain all this. So my main scripture is. Uh, the book of, uh, I think I preached this last time, First Kings 19, 1 to 18. I'm still on the same passage, the one we used to preach last time concerning um, this story. Now, I'm reading. Now, I have told Jezebel everything Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. So Jezebel sent a message to Elijah to say, May the God deal with me be it so severely if by this time tomorrow I do not make your life like that of one of them. Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Besheba in Judah, he left his servant there. While he himself went in a day's journey into the wilderness, he came to a broom brush, sat down under it and prayed that he might die. I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take away my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank, strengthened by the food. He traveled 40 days and 40 night, nights until he reached Horeb, the mountain of God. There he went into a cave and spent the night. And the word of the Lord came to him. What are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with the sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, Go out and stand on the mountain in the presence of the Lord, for the Lord is about to pass by. Then a great and powerful wind tore the mountains apart and shattered the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in that wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in that earthquake. After the earthquake came a fire, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire came a gentle whisper. When Elijah heard it, he pulled his cloak over his face and went out and stood at the mountain of the cave. Then a voice said to him, what are you doing here, Elijah? He replied, I have been very zealous for the Lord God Almighty. The Israelites have rejected your covenant, torn down your altars, and put your prophets to death with a sword. I am the only one left, and now they are trying to kill me too. The Lord said to him, 
go back the way you came and go to the desert of Damascus. When you get there, anoint Hazael over Aram. Also anoint Jehu, son of Nimshi, king of Israel. And anoint Elisha, son of Shapat, from uh, Abel Mehola to succeed you as a prophet. Jehu will put to death any who has kept the sword of Hazael. And Elisha will put to death any who has kept the sword of Jehu. Yet I reserve 7,000 in Israel, all whose knees have not bowed down to Baal and whose mouths have not kissed him. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, that's the scripture I'm using today. Strongholds destroying emotional patterns. Now, strongholds comes from two words, strong and hold. As simple as that. So, um, it denotes that it, it is a strong tissue. I thought of using the word tissue so that you can see that it's something that is there. Praise the Lord. Because um, I don't want to make it like it is invisible. You know, people say, God, you are invisible, immortal. No, it's true. But now in this case, I want to use the word tissue so that you can know it is there. Are we together? So, strongholds comes from the word strong and hold. Holding to means that it hinders progress. So it strongly holds you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, uh, strong, again, because they have the ability to determine your convictions and your belief system. So it's not something that just happens it is there it is existing and then it holds you strongly praise the lord now that's a description now in definition now because i told you i'm calling it today emotional strongholds and not depression today a stronghold is a demonic fortress of thoughts thoughts housing evil spirits that control dictate and influence your attitude or someone's attitude behavior they oppress and discourage and also filter and color how one views or reacts to situations circumstances or people and finally it also will ultimately define or influence the decisions that somebody makes praise the lord that it is so it is it is a fortress fort rest of thoughts but when they are there they provide a habitation a fertile ground a good conducive a conducive environment for the some other dark powers to come they have a stepping stone to come and play some music there and inform you to make some other things which are not in God's word. Praise the name of the Lord. Are we together? Now, the manifestations of these things we see is because someone thought about it. You know, you see, the way you've dressed today, and I'm explaining all this. I'll be back to my lessons. When you are dressed the way you are dressed today, one more the way you dress today, probably you thought that you dress that way yesterday, or when you woke up before you put on that red shirt, you thought, let me use this. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So, any cause of action never happens. Hapana. Mini mekata. Hapana. Atiwa inafanyika tu. Pasi. Ilifanyika tu. Hapana. There's some, there's some process. Praise the Lord. Now, whatever you are processing determines how, what decision you will make. But that thing you are processing also could be bred from how you feel. And get Vilona, feel can also determine how you will think. And whatever you will, think, you will think will now determine the decision you make. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, as you entertain thoughts and participate in activities that are contrary to the will of God, you open up yourself to the enemies of God to inhabit in those areas. And when these thoughts and activities become habitual 
over and over and over. You allow a spiritual fortification to be built around that negative kind of influence. And now you become accustomed to responding to the influence and control of the voice of that bad spirit that will rest on those platforms you've built. Praise the Lord. Are we together? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Yes, good. So those are strongholds. Strongly holding you. Strong because it has ability to hold you. Yani, ni mekushika uendi. I said, I am not going. Praise the Lord. Now, you can picture in your mind. Now you can check yourself and, and if you understand what I'm saying. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, strongholds are well identified with a repeated pattern that always manifests in a given area of life. So they come with a repeated pattern that manifests in a given area of life. And then it becomes a pattern. You remember pattern? This one is called what? Zigzag. One as we were pastor. <laughs> it's called zigzag. So that's a pattern. That's a, a pattern. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Now, today. As we talk about emotional strongholds, we are aiming to destroy emotional patterns where there are experiences perhaps we've been through and they are painful. And then we take and we hide. Praise the Lord. Then when we hide, we live life. But as we live life, we shape all our decisions that are coming ahead because of that thing. Are you getting me? Then as you do that, when, when, when... God will want you to make a progress in that area of life. He comes and reminds you of that area. And then you break down in tears. <laughs> it's okay. It's true. It's not bad to break down. It simply says, Kunakaki. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Um, do you feel pressures within yourself that are never going concerning a given area of your life? Is there any habitual feeling that comes over and over when given, um, a given aspect of life is touched? So that ikikuzwa kitoko hivi, kitoko, kitoko. There's a habitual feeling, a feeling that comes over and over, over and over, over and over. When you are in a fellowship, one day we were in a fellowship and, and we were, hey, now this story, uh, yeah. Okay, we were in a fellowship back in the main church. So we were swaps. So we were doing what we call chapati festival. So we cooked chapos, so we were cooking and Dan, were you there? And we were cooking and throwing, hey, next. And you know, it was a, a real chapati festival. Chapatis were all over in the air, in the church, in the kitchen, everywhere you could walk. It was a chapati festival. So after that, we were seated in a team. No, uh, the whole of swaps started to make a, and people were saying, my name is Duncan Mugerandirangu. I am from Masem High School in Masem Mara University. I did BA in economics. I'm also doing CPA. I sang to be here so everybody said that everybody said that i'm a graduate uon maseno masaimara shuka university uh, ku igaton and then it comes to this good girl here who has been a house help never went to school and is in class seven what do i say oh my god naka break nama chozi moja billy mutiririko river nile give you i could say anything why? Because something he is, she's hot. She has never schooled like other people. Now when she's where other people are in their school, she feels, I don't think I'm like other people. Praise the Lord. Now you're understanding what I'm saying. So is there a habitual feeling? So that when we touch about something, you coil in. You become emotional. You run away. You don't want it to be touched. You don't want somebody to, to ask you anything about it. Is there such a habitual feeling? An emotional stronghold. It is holding you. And so you are the kind of person I'm addressing today. Now, emotional strongholds are built and are the worst of things to deal with. They stem from the little offenses that lead to bitterness and then the bitter root spews poison to breed many other vices that make life complex. 
in the entire biblical council, we see many people who are hurt and they did silly things like Absalom simply because the sister was raped by the stepbrother Amnon. He said, I am hurt and he revenged. And when he revenged by killing Amnon, he went and overthrew his father from the kingdom and proclaimed himself a king and he died in war because of a feeling which is real and bad and nasty and a sad thing but you see it still led him in wrong dimension blessed be the name of the lord and so the whole issue is not just psychological it is psychological very deeply seated psychologically but has a spiritual dimension why when those things happen now you have opened room for the devil to come and make music in your soul and he will keep on making you feeling bad every time we have to break some of these things if you have to, you have to move on not even breaking destroying destruction means you must not exist again in me or rather, that feeling is And so the story of Elijah we read, I'll be mentioning three lessons that emotional strongholds begin from realities that are real, tangible, and evident. That, verse, that is verse 1 and 2. And then emotional strongholds determine our first course of actions and reactions in that specific area. That is my lesson number two, verse three and nine, three to nine. And then the lesson will be emotional strongholds hinder progress in a given affected area, verse 10 and 18. Praise the name of the Lord. And so number one, emotional strongholds begin from realities that are real, tangible, and evident. Now Elijah, who is a, was a man like us, it's what the Bible calls him, was a mighty man who received messages from God and was full of faith in his career as a prophet. He is in this hard assignment that God has given him to pull down Baalism in the nation of Israel that had been instigated by Jeroboam and multiplied by Ahab, inspired by Jezebel. So Jezebel al on the motto, fire. Fire. And few. So the main big assignment of Elijah was to bring down that so that God Yahweh, the Hebrews will call him Yahweh, Yahweh, the great I am, will be the only God in the land of Israel. But now, Elijah, in the scripture we read, verse 1 and 2, when he's threatened by Jezebel, we see him manifest. Now we see the true man who was calling fire in the context of Campbell. Actually, we see a picture of a person who has been working and struggling with something hidden in his heart. It's only that the same thing had not been presented to him. It's only that Jezebel had not captured him among the other prophets who she was killing. If you read the same scripture in, in chapter 18, when Jezebel was hiding, let me explain this. Ni mesema sikimbi round hi pole pole strongholds to tamaliza. Kama ni December to tawbiri hi. Ish. Bona si fiwe. See, there was a record that happened. When Jezebel, son of Ezbal, the king of Sidonia, who was the father of Jezebel. The dad of Jezebel was called Ezbal. He was a priest of Baal. And actually it's called Ezbal. Apo mbele kuna Baal. So it's e t h hyphen and then Baal. He was the priest of Baal and he is the father of Jezebel. Now Ahab says blah 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 nini and then the I love you the love of my life and then Jezebel becomes the wife of Ahab. Now she comes but she's been brought up in this place where they worship Baal and Baal is the order of the day and now tells Ahab we will bow. She was an influential woman actually one of the amazing, powerful, influential women in the Bible. If you want to get the positive lesson from Jezebel, that's the only one. She was influential. She was that woman. Now, when she came, I want you to know that Jezebel had no problem with the worship of Yahweh. Why? Because the Canaanite religion and other people who were surrounding Israel, they had no problem with other gods. Mark you, they had many other gods, Ashtate, Asherah. Baal. Praise the Lord. So they took Yahweh just to be among other gods. So the problem was not Yahweh. 
is not God. The problem was, he is just like any other gods, like the ones we have. But Jezebel was telling Ahab, it's only that we cannot allow him to dominate here. He can be worshipped, yes. But here, we need to raise an altar for Baal, so that he can be the god of this place. And then Yahweh can be like all other gods around here. Are we together, church? Praise the Lord. Now, Jezebel knew that will be hindered by the prophets of God. So the first scheme was kill the voice of God so that people cannot hear God and then lead them astray nicely. Are we together? Now, as this is happening, 100, 100 prophets were hidden in caves by a guy called Obadiah. He was a palace administrator. He was working in the palace. So he hid people in the camps, prophets in camps, and others who left. When Gina come Elijah, you know Elijah, hey, Elijah Likom Spiri. Elijah, let me tell you, I'm explaining this. I'm not in a hurry. Elijah, before he went to meet Ahab, he told Obadiah, go tell Ahab to come in chapter 18. Then Obadiah said, Why do you want me to be killed by this king? Why do you want him to kill me? Because I can go to call him and then I find you have disappeared. We don't understand how you operate. Because Elijah could appear here and then. Come, Spirit. Buona I want you to see this guy. He was powerful. He was deep. He was great. He was amazing. He was endowed with so much from God for his assignment here in the world. But when prophets are being killed and then he's not among them. Something tells him, eh, maybe he mourned, oh my God, my fellow prophets are dead. Eh, let's go to the you mean to find a nini? And then, akachukua yo, akeka kwa hat. Akeka uko ndani? Sindio? Bwana sifiwe. Now, when the opportune moment came, when the same thing that was done for other prophets was to face him, now we see the real Elijah and what he was harboring inside himself concerning the whole of this issue. The first thing he felt, I get, albeit, is that, Mimi ni kipoto pado ni tawa watu. Misi yoti kama na wezana na ima neno. Bata kafunikia kasema apana. Kazi ya mungu lazima yendele. Maisha lazima yendele. Na ikaendele, ikaendele. And then, when he did whatever he did in Mount Carmel, Jezebel manifests. And then we see him reacting. This is to mean that a reality, it is true, it is true and very true that Jezebel killed the prophets of God. That was not an imagination. It was not a story. It was not a movie. It was not an episode. It is a reality. So these things that are affecting Elijah as we see him manifest here, it's not because he was just fearful. There was a tissue inside that was telling him, man, that day you'll be found, you'll just be like them. It was there. So he was emotionally hit. He was affected, but you could not know. See, people are just good. You see them smile. Hi, Ukoaje. Lakini, Ukondani, Nishi, Nishita. Blessed be the name of the Lord. You see, the real things we go through are times incognito. Even through hearing, seeing, and even doing are so powerful because they go in the, emo- they go in the soul. First, they affect our emotions. And then influence the way we manifest many times. They build up foundations in the suburbs of our souls and are potential pillars of erecting strongholds that will hold us back. These kind of experiences are always real and not imaginative. They carry a lot of reality that makes sense and are so deadly to victims who fall in the trap of such realities. They do not respect age. They do not. They don't respect a calling. They don't respect prowess or any other kind of accolade that we carry. But they affect us. And so, you just need to see them as they want you to see and you become a victim. This is what I mean. When you go through those things, those things will always want you to see things the way they want you to see. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, 
emotional strongholds, they begin from realities. You don't dream to be emotionally hurt. You don't see a vision that tells you you'll be emotionally hurt tomorrow. Ni realities. Zenye, at times we, can, we are not in control of. Blessed be the name of the Lord. A story of John Wesley, I mentioned here some times back. He was in Georgia for missions and was dating a girl called Sophie Hopke. And then he took too long because he was so deep doing missions. He told the girl, just wait a little bit, a little bit, I'll marry you. And the girl got fed up and married another guy in church. Um, as if that is not enough. He was not only marrying a guy in church, but a guy in the church that John Wesley was pastoring as a missions pastor. So I am here as a pastor. I'm married though. I'm not dating. So... Um, he was a missions pastor and then was dating a girl in the church, praise the Lord. And then he was just keeping her, keeping her, keeping her, keeping her, keeping her, keeping her. And then she said, man, I have to move on with life. Then got Duncan, for example. Then she married that girl. Now, John Wesley was the one who was to officiate that wedding. <clears throat> he was to officiate by the duty of a priest and she said I can't, I will not officiate it and she, well, he was forced to officiate it, he did but when they were coming to church he denied that girl the Holy Communion, he said I will not serve your Holy Communion guys, you, I'll bet you should go Google John Wesley, you know you don't know who we are talking about, this is the founder of Methodist Church this guy was he, he was he was a force one as if he were but he was hard and then he leaves he goes back to england he's he comes from uk he goes back to england and and guy gets a girl and she marries a girl called molly vasail then when she marries this good girl he doesn't give him attention Actually, he's one of the preachers in the history of the founders of the church and the revivalists who was advocating for singlehood and not marrying. And he was saying, marriage is a choice. It's true, it's a choice. Bible may say, man, a choice. Even the Paul and marriage is a, a choice. It is a choice. You must not. You must not. But he's married. But now, in this marriage he's in, he's struggling. So he goes outside and the wife finds some letters from other girls and other girls and other girls and other girls and he doesn't care. So one day this girl appears and there was a bad drama. Kupelekeshana. Unajua kupelekeshana? Kuambiana. Ile unasemanga leo tukipatana tunambiana na inai? Inaisha. Lakini ukikuwa huko malituko, huko kwa kristo, mwezi ambiana mkiachana, oh, hapana, minta kuambia, ungeni alafu mrudi muka. One as if you were. Are we together? I want this to sink. I don't want to hurry this. Now, when he was doing that in this marriage, it was because he felt that that girl betrayed me. I can't get the, another one who is faithful. How couldn't she wait on me? I'll just marry because I have to. Are we together, church? Blessed be the name of the Lord. And now, this girl told her, it is over and is the wife. It is over. Jamana potea missions three months akuji and the husband. Four months akuji. Bona si fiwe. And then when he goes, the girl discovers he's not faithful to the things he's doing. And then when he, she said, it is over. Wesley wrote and said, know me and know yourself. Suspect me no more. Aspas me no more. Provoke me no more. Do not cry longer. Content for mastery. Be content to be a private, insignificant person, known and loved by God and me alone. That's what John Wesley told the wife. The wife said, I'm not coming back. And then, in one of his writings, he wrote in his journals, he said, I did not forsake her, I did not dismiss her, and I will not and will never recall her. Praise the Lord. And John Wesley will come. Spiri! Tunajifanyanga tuko powerful. None of us is powerful. We feel things. We get hurt. We get destroyed. We get paired. We behave weirdly. Some of us are lions and leopards in us. We touch a given area. We see your old teeth. 
and your eyes fully manifesting and you, you are raging up, burning. You can't even do anything bad for somebody because that's how we are. And there are things when they are touched, when Jezebel touched Elijah, we just manifest. And so each one of us has an experience to share and most of them, if negative ones, have potential to eat us on, in a big time. And you see the things that happens to us, none of them are coincidences. At times God wants these things to be stepping stones for us to see how great he is in our lives. And so, these things that happen are real and they hurt. Not heathens, not unbelievers, but you and I. And so they begin from realities that are real, tangible, and you can see them, you can touch them, you can feel them. You know and you know and you know if this happened to me. Now, number two, emotional strongholds determine our first course of actions and reactions. See, Elijah, after doing whatever he had done, perhaps he says, this woman, I'm destroying Baal, but this woman looks powerful. I know God is all powerful, but Allah, I cannot just assume this thing. The, the other prophets were killed and they were truly of God. Is there any difference with them? No, I need to be careful here. That's how we will always think. I need to be careful here. Hey, by the way, it's good to be careful. But when these things happen to us, when you are emotionally damaged, you will always see things in the lenses of the damage you have suffered. You will not want to see things in the lens of the truth of God. You will not want to see things in the lens of the God Almighty who is able to heal the brokenhearted. You see, many people have missed to rest in God's will because they are thinking from their damaged perspective other than the reality in the true saving gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. The, the response that, that Jezebel gives Elijah when he did whatever he did made him feel threatened. The fear did not come with the messenger from Jezebel, but it was already in him. The fear did not come because Jezebel sent a message. The fear was already present. The reaction that he acted when he received the news, it was already present. It was inherent. It's only that an opportunity had not presented himself so that we can see how he would manifest. The emotions were affected in a way that fear was in him and he had made and fear had made habitation within him and as I said when the opportunity of threat comes towards him the damage and the strongholds of fear and timidity got strength and informed him that he was under attack and the real and in a real big danger which was true from a reality perspective but again even though it was true it was not a real truth if we look in the dimension of God. So the first thing he thought of doing is to flee away from the danger that had been instigated by Jezebel. Whatever made him to behave this way was the kind of damage that he harbored by telling himself that he will also succumb as the other prophets had succumbed. God perhaps did not expect this from him. That's why perhaps he was asked what he was doing and he the answer he gave was the same over and over, over and over. I have been zealous. I have been zealous. I have been zealous. I'm the only one. I'm the only one. And now they're after me. Now they're after me. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Church, have you not had people leave employment and sitting at home crying, come Lord Jesus, come, because the boss put a little pressure in them because of their laziness. You become lazy, boss and a pressure kidogo, you say I'm resigning, I can't make this, come Lord Jesus, save my job, hallelujah, and you run away. Have you not heard of such stories? Have you not heard that some people cry and shout on top of their voices that you can't handle me this way, you can't, even my father never handled me this way, even my mother never did this to me. Why are you reminding me of the things my uncle did? Where are they, those things? It means they are there. Have you not seen and heard wives leading, leaving their husbands because they spotted an element in their husbands that resembles 
they are arrogant and irresponsible dads. So if you marry a husband and shows a slight tendency of your father who used to come, that's <clears throat> everybody goes under the table. So when you see such a just a tendency, not even actualizing, a tendency of such, you become insecure. So ni kila mali. Ata si husband sikuizi ni my boyfriend na girlfriend. Sasa leo jana salimi o meamka. Uko poa, uko wapi? Akitoa klasi asubuhi. Sasa uko poa, uko wapi? Akienda lunch. Sasa uko poa, uko wapi? You always insecure kuna mtu mwingine hapo. Si waamini ngia watu. Hawa watu. Hii jenda, hii jenda, hii jenda. Hii jenda. And you see some of the people in the realm of deep sin are in there and they don't want to embrace God's perspective that breaks every fall and renders men free. I'm struggling a little bit with the mic please. So some people are too careful for nothing until they paralyze everything because of a past experience they went but still link us as a threat to progress. See, these things are real threats. And so you become paralyzed. So the best thing as I've said before when a dog pupus sorry I'm using that on the altar but allow me it's for your sake when a dog pupus here I've used this example before and you take a bucket and cover this that pupu and we come here we will worship we will not hear any bad odor yes we will enjoy service we will dance how many tender am and we will not feel anything but wait Wait, our boys who are playing here, the young boys, they kick that bucket and then we will hear the old order and people will run away from this church. Praise the Lord. So when we are here, it is like there's nothing here in here that is a threat to, our, um, to the air around here. But when it's removed, we see and we've, we can smell the bad order. That's exactly what happens. So Elijah was hurt. He harbored fear. He was hurt when those things were happening. And then he hid and proceeded on with life, with life, with life. And then when an opportunity came, the police were undone. Then we see it manifesting. That's what we do. We hide. We don't face them. We hide. We don't say, I know this happened to me. I know and I know. And I want to face it. I don't want this thing. I don't want to be feeling this. And every time I feel this, I go back, I go back. I can't do anything. I'm paralyzed. If I have to make decisions, I just fear. I just say I cannot move on because these are the true things that happened to my life before. And so please understand me, brethren. Understand me. Understand me. Yes, we will understand you. But again, we have to destroy those kinds of patterns. Emotional strongholds will always send a signal that makes people behave in a certain way. You hear people say that I told you this gender, this church, this pastor, this life, he Kenya yetu, and all those things because they were hurt. How am I kanjo? How am I kanjo? Lakini alishi kwa wrong side, akalipa, and then he got hurt. Every time they see kanjos, they shut off. I was shown a video where a police was being hit by a matatu guy, not a, ma- a guy in private. I'll talk with Jamna, Askari, Sijua, Likwa, Mefanya, Nini. Mama mbele ya gari na piga bip. Asongea kasimama akuja kashika askari anambia. Wacha ujinga bwana. Kenya sina kwa na maneno. Akamgonga. <laughs> you just know what happened. I don't know where that guy is. May the Lord have mercy on him. Think he must be in so much trouble. Amen. Because he was just emotional. You know, when you're emotional you just make funny decisions. You enter unwanted relationships. Bad ones. You enter bad deals because you were enchanted. You felt nice. Una check it a deal. Hey, he took it chapa. Hey, Pasi has shared his quill story. Na kaenda ak execute. Hey, apa tuta omoka. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Na kaka quills. Quills. You remember the story shared? You see, it feels nice. After a while, I will be. Hey, hey, hey. Nta kuchenge na quills. Sata mama somi eleven. Nta kuchenge wa na. Nta kuchenge nyumba na quills. Oki ni kubali tu moon tu naenda. Kwa zahani mo ni kosi shells. Tunafaa kubelieve Mungu ndio lakini tendi kusho kuna kai hivi this is our plan by this time I'll be like this by this time I'll be like this which is good and nice and I always advocate for that but if you are being enchanted and you're just excited and you make decisions with your heart and not with your head with your mind you will be caught with life and you will crash They determine the course of actions, how we react to things, especially that specific area where we are affected. When it presents itself, this is the way we will behave. Praise the Lord. 
Hallelujah. Are we together? Then emotional strongholds hinder progress. And this one I've mentioned as I finish. In verse 10 and 18 to 18, Elijah justified all his actions and the way he was thinking and having done whatever he had done. His career is on the verge of ending. And actually, he was instructed to sum up his work by anointing other guys who we read, Hazael, Jehu, to deal with the things he was to deal with. Now, one of the things that saints should accept is that when you are suffering an emotional issue or a stronghold, as I mentioned it today, you can never make progress in that specific area of life. You'll keep postponing things over and over and over and over. And as you postpone, as you fear, as you make wrong choices, life becomes more complex and more complex and more complex. So a good sister of mine, an amazing one. So, and all of them friends, girl, I love you. I like you so much. But because the good brother looked like uh, what I always call, I'm describing in history, um, proconsuls africanus. The body, sh- the, 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 the countenance is not well shaped. The ears look like they are this. Uh, the nose looks like it's gone like this. And the surah is like this a little bit. But the brother is a prayer warrior. Warrior, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. He calls the heavens. And that's what we knew. The brother and he's doing it very well. So when he went and called, told our sister, you know, we, our sisters, we are waiting for tall guys who look nice, who are nice and amazing. So when he goes, this girl says, hey, Mark, see where is he? See where is he? What is the situation you are in attack? Not you are. I know what I want. We know you know what you want. You never even ask what God's will. I know what I want. So, can I you? One as if you sana. So the brother was left, oh my God. <laughs> and see, the brother is a pastor, called so strongly for the gospel. So, Actually, he left campus, he has never worked. He went to do missions, preaching everywhere, and then he planted a church somewhere in Nairobi. So, as he was doing that, doing that, doing that, he became hurt. But he rose up and moved on with life. He said, Ah, Imeisha, God is faithful. He will open for me. I don't maybe see you. And so he married a, a good sister who was still in campus. Alikuwa na Malizia Shule, na Kafanya Ville Pastor, wait, Walifa. And she came to our Shule, and I'm Fanisha Aru. Arusi, pastor. What has been sana? And then, and then, and then, what happened is that, uh, yeah, I attended the wedding. It was nice. And then that sister came, and when we left there, the one who said Anaka Astrolopithecus anamensis, I'm a proconsul Africana. See, that's uh, that, that's me saying. That's not what she said. Okay, so she left there hurt. Actually, she was not talking to us. She was hurt. But you know, what times we joke. We joke too much. Too much. I see young people gambling with life because of feelings. And they think God will wait on them because they have to be okay for Him to move with them. No, He moves with the movers. You will not progress, I assure you. Yes, I understand you. I will feel you. I'll talk to you. I'll hear you. I'll counsel you. I'll encourage you. But I also to t- I need to tell you that God will not understand because you failed. He wants you to face it, deal with it, and move with life. And move with Him as He gives you strength. Not as we encourage you. As He releases His strength and power to counter those things that they will crash down. And today, my sister is still waiting on 31 years, waiting and counting, waiting on the Lord. And now young brothers like us, who are younger than her, have come and gone, and we are still moving on. And when we talk, when we want, we talk about family, actually there's somewhere we are, we are leaders together. When it's somewhere we are saying, I'm back near my family is well, she gets hearts. Now telling her, overcome this thing, face this thing. She's still, Imam Shika. Him. She was hard. She doesn't want to accept I was hard when the good brother went. And some of us become insecure. We behave insecurely. We want to become watchmen to friends, watchmen to our wives, watchmen to our husbands, watchmen to our girlfriends and boyfriends. We become so insecure because we fear. We don't want God to take charge. But an amazing thing I love is that God has released His power and given us through Christ Jesus to speak against every stronghold and they break. Now, are you complaining about the things 
you did not get when you were young as the music thing comes? Are you still holding on an absentee father or mother or brother claiming that you wish they were there yet they might, not, they might never come, actually they will never come to some of us? Are you there still crying that nobody supports you and you have made decisions of going down to moral decay because of that? You see, these people who do bad things and bad manners, some of them like lesbians, they have a story. Some of them were raped when they were young and then they said, oh me, I cannot, I cannot and I will never, and I will never and they become accustomed in that way and they end up in moral and moral decay. Are you there in sin because you never got freedom but now you have it to enjoy by deciding to send statements to your offenders by sinning? Some of us say we are rejected, we feel rejected, we feel rejected, yes. It's because there are things holding us within that make us behave and respond in that way. But alas, in Jeremiah 1, 7 to 1, verse 7 to 10, God tells Jeremiah that, but the Lord said to me, do not say I am too young. You must go to everyone I sent you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them for I am with you and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. And this is what God told Jeremiah. See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and to tear down, to destroy and to overthrow, to build and to plant. So we have Jesus. And you see, when we speak, when we speak words, words carry power. That's what the Bible says. Every word you speak becomes part of your doctrine. Every word you speak carries weight and carries amazing weight. Not even to only the hearers, but even in the spiritual realm. The war in the spiritual realm is about words. We speak words. We cancel verdicts. So if you are told, wewe ni kitingo, wewe ni mchafu, you will never go anywhere. And you became hurt and you are accustoming yourself to that. That was a verdict. So we release another verdict of the, in the name of Jesus Christ that counters that verdict and you enjoy freedom. And all our emotions are subdued by the Holy Ghost of God. And we are there to enjoy life because God has called us to enjoy life, not to endure. No one is here just to say, life is hard. Maisha ningumu, si raisi ningumu. Yes! That's what the world tells us. But you see, did God make us just to struggle? And to enjoy life. At times we eat very sweet food, but it can't taste sweet because we are so hot. That God gave you a sense of taste to enjoy every meal. These things are deep. And we will never grow. We will never grow if we don't face them. We keep hiding them as Elijah. When Jezebel comes up and touches that area, you'll always crumble down. You'll always cry. You'll never move on. You'll never make progress in that specific area of life. Yet we are believing God to grow. We are believing God to be established. How shall we, if we are still in pain? Yes, it is so painful, we know. But will we invoke the power of God, the power he has given us to speak amazing things and facing issues, saying, you know what? You know what, Pussy? I was hurt. You know what, Dan? I was hurt. You know what, Dan? This and this happened to me. I took offense. You know what? This and this and this happened to me 30 years ago. Please, 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 help me pray. And we call upon the Holy Ghost of God to help you know that the truth of God surpasses all other truths, even though they look truthful, but they are never the real truths. So we need that God to come and subdue our emotions, that we will destroy patterns, habitual feelings, habitual ways. Shall we bow down just as we I sing a stand of that song? Pastor will come and pray for us. I just don't want us to be strong and strong, but we can believe God. Believe God. May I request us to stand as we respond to that word? I don't know what is going through your mind as you think about the word of God today. And I'll, I'll be opening this session to anyone that is dealing with some emotional breakdown. Maybe something that you've not dealt with 
and that you need help from God give you an opportunity just to come and we will support you in prayer you know as pastor was giving the testimony of that young girl that cried during that uh, chapati festival i remember one day my wife calls her and uh, she tells her actually i want to give you something to do and uh, when she came to see the, my wife we were with her in the office and this girl was telling my wife i've never opened a laptop i've never touched a computer in my life this thing that you want to give me to do i am not sure i can do it and i remember we were telling her you know these things people learn they learn them and uh, you can also learn them as i speak to you today that young girl that was crying is an immigration consultant in nairobi as we speak today, as we speak today as we speak today she is doing work that is being done by graduates she went back to school she started working and today she is doing exploits i'll bring her here one day one day she will be here so that you can be encouraged you know some of those traumas you have to deal with them you have to break them akiongea kiingereza huyo dada utafikiria kona phd just breaking breaking and dealing with those issues today you will not talk of education and she is hurt no because she knows she can also learn she can also get that knowledge and that is why pastor is saying we some of us are not progressing because there are things we have inside us some of us are not moving forward because there are things that we have not addressed there are some pains that we have not dealt with and the lord is here to help you out music team i want to disorganize your bait i want us to do that song that pastor has started with when the oceans roars and the thunders i will soar with you above the storms you can project it ivy and as we do that song i want i want us to pray with someone who has some you know the thing every time ikiguzwa tu ni kama kidonda ni kama kidonda na aishi ni kama kidonda tu i want to invite you in front and we will pray we will ask god to help you out don't fear what men will think about you pastor has reminded us that those things it is real men and women that go through them powerful men and women spiritual men and women so don't think someone will think that you are weakling because you are dealing with an emotional thing inside you it is strong men and women that go through that and we can help you as a church and pray with you and help you break that cycle so that you get strong and move on this altar is open you can join us and we will help you in prayer thank you lord when the oceans rise and thunders roar i will so with you above the storm father you are king over the flood i will be still and no
Thank you, Jesus. Rindarabuzia. Yes, Lord. Joy, come. Let me pray for you and faith. Joy, come and faith. Let me pray for you. Father, in the name of the Lord, I pray for these ladies and I commit them before you. Father, I don't know what they are going through, but it is well known to you. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, the one that heals us, the one that sees the deeper thoughts of man, the one that sees our cries, the one that heals our hearts, I speak the least of God. Yes, Lord. I break every stronghold in the name of the Lord. Every stronghold in the name of Jesus. I shatter every evil in the name of the Lord. Every power that operates against you, I arrest it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And now by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, by the power of the Holy Ghost, I speak your release. In the name of Jesus, be set free, be set free, be set free. Yes, in the name of the Lord, lose the devil. In the name of Jesus, you have no power, you have no authority. If your life in the name of the Lord, lose them, lose them in Jesus' name, lose them in the name of the Lord. Release them, release them, release them. In the name of the Lord, I cast every demonic operation. In the name of Jesus, every demonic operation. afternoon experience you I pray that your glory will overwhelm them Father even as they deal with the issues in their lives I pray that you will set them free I pray for deliverance in their lives oh God in the name of Jesus be glorified be exalted and be magnified for this is our prayer in Jesus name and the church say come on let us celebrate the Lord God bless you my brothers and sisters and may the Lord heal you may the Lord deal with every situation in your life yes Lord could you be here and you're not born again and you want to surrender your life to Christ you're not saved and you want to give your life to Christ before we finish this service anyone amen we can take our seats briefly Thank you very much, our music team. God bless you and do you well. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. We will proceed with that uh, someone next Sunday. So come with a friend. Um, come expecting from the Lord. And I know the Lord will minister to you. Today after the service, we have our baptism. We have quite a big number of people that are being baptized today. And... Um, as I did request you on Sunday, if you don't have anything that you're rushing to do, you can join us down there at the baptism parlor and uh, you can support our brethren even as they enjoy um, baptism today. I will be making some clarifications down there so that uh, if you don't understand what 
uh, baptism is all about. Uh, we will be making comments there. I, want, I don't want to make them from here. Um, and actually, we might go there and you decide I also want to be baptized. Um, it's not closed. We can baptize you. Um, for those that have already registered, uh, Pastor Mark has taken you through some uh, clarifications. And um, I'm sure we've answered all your questions. And I'm sure you are ready and prepared. Buona sifuesana. So uh, just for order, after the service, uh, I request us to allow those that are being baptized to take their tea first. Because you know some of them will need to go and change. Uh, so allow them. And if you know you're being baptized, please then don't keep us waiting. After we say the grace, you rush at the back there. You take your tea and your bread. You take it very fast. Then go and change. Amen. Then the next team to take uh, tea is our music team. Uh, may I request that you don't uh, do the normal uh, briefing here so that we save on time. Our music team, even you, after the team has taken their, uh, their tea, please go there and grab your tea. Um, I'm sure you can make your briefing after baptism because I know some of these equipment so need to be taken down there. Uh, so uh, we want to save on time. And uh, also at 3 p.m., we have a pastor's forum being launched. Uh, you remember I did announce it last Sunday. We are meeting at 3 at a church called KGMS. It's just below Slaughterhouse in Dagani. And I request you to, to attend. I'll be there. Um, please come and uh, keep your pastor warm. Wana Sivesan. Nisiji Kuta Pekea. So, uh, let's go there. Let's fellowship with the, with the other churches in Dagani as we enjoy the glory of God. Pastor Mark will not be around the better part of this week. Uh, he is traveling to, to greet the parents um, with the family. Uh, but uh, be sure that the leaders are still around. I will be around tomorrow. Um, and uh, Wednesday, the leaders will be around here. So, church will progress, no gap. Um, so please note that so that you don't book Pastor Mark this week. But he will be back from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Uh, so you, if you must meet him, you can book him uh, Thursday, Friday, or Saturday. But the first, no, fr from Friday, yeah? or oh, thereabout, yeah. So I needed to announce that so that if you don't see Pastor around, you don't keep asking. Kwani alienda wapi? Anaenda Western. <laughs> now to let her cook. <laughs> yeah. are, we, are we sending pasta with the greetings? Yeah. Uh, salimia wazazi. Uh, tuma salimia sana wa kwa kutupea wewe huku. Uh, you can imagine since he came, he has not been there. Uh, he went once um, for a barrio, but now he is going officially to visit uh, the parents. So uh, we send you with our greetings. When you go, say hi to them. Amen. Amen. Um, our guest, after we say the words of grace, you will gather here. Um, a few of our leaders and some members will have a cup of tea together with you. As we said, we love guests very much. So when you see us crowding there, it's just because we want to share the love of God with you. So don't be scared when you see about 10 or so uh, members of church. Just coming to take tea with you. Ni mapenzi tu ni mingi tu hivyo. Na tunapendanga wageni kwa nguvu hii. Kwa nguvu hivyo. So wa wageni wetu tutakutana hapo. Tukunywe kachai pamoja. And then once we do that, we will go for baptism. So I ask you, please take your tea very fast. Don't make a lot of discussions around here. Take your tea as fast as possible so that we go down there. My prayer is that in the next one hour and a half, we should be done and we release each other. I pray for you that this week will be fruitful. I pray that God will give you success and the Lord will bless the work of your hands. May favor be your portion this week. And when people see you, let them see the glory of God shining of your, over your lives. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Shalom. God bless you. And may you have an exciting week. I